This is the BBC. This podcast is supported by advertising outside the UK. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Thanks for downloading Comedy of the Week. I'm Darren Harriet, your host and guide of the best comedy from BBC Radio 4. Here's this week's show. Thank you for downloading this podcast of Love in Recovery. Um, I'm Rebecca Front and I play Fiona. It's a weekly comedy drama about a group of alcoholics and it's funny, sweet, tender, um, full of great stories and often surprising and heartbreaking. I hope you enjoy listening to it. We absolutely love making it. Oh, sorry, Where is everyone? Not here yet. Yet early. I'm early? Yeah. Caught me setting up. Bit of a glimpse backstage. You spied the man behind the curtain. Shut up and put the cheers out, Andy. So? So. Here we are. Yep. Just the two of us. <laughs> Makes me think of that song. Suicide Solution. No. Just the two of us. Simon, are you OK? Yeah, I'm fine, Andy. Listen, Simon, I know you like to joke around and tell me that I just gave myself the title of group leader. Not a joke. And it's very funny. I, it always makes me laugh. No, I don't know why you'd laugh, because it's honestly not a joke. But I am the group leader. You literally might as well say you're an admiral. I am the group leader. Or Chris Akabusi. Well, for God's sake, look, I curse, Simon, about you. So I want you to tell me what the problem is. Because I care, and I promise you, I'll understand. It's just... Women trouble. <sighs> women's trouble. No, not women's tr- It's not premenstrual, Andy. Women trouble. Trouble with a woman. I'm having a nightmare with Fiona. Oh, for God's sake, just leave it. Look, we always said it was going to be tough, Simon. It's just too... Look, it's too complicated. Yeah, and it's even more complicated because you're not even actually an alcoholic. Mm. So there's, there's things like that, there's things that she'll be going through you, you won't understand. Oh, I know that, Andy. And you're right, OK? Sometimes she's difficult and complicated and horrible, but I don't mind all that. I'm used to that. She's Fiona. She's always been complicated and horrible. That, that's kind of what I love about her. But this... This is something different. I made us lunch the other day, right, me and her. I wanted to do something nice, cheer her up. So I spent ages making these sandwiches. Beautiful, exactly how she likes them. So we're chatting. I've got my sandwich in my hand and I get bitten by a, a horsefly maybe or it might have been a wasp. Either way, it hurt like, I mean, it made me clench my fist. So right, Fiona sat there in the kitchen talking to me when all of a sudden I just go, Aah! And I squished my sandwich into a little ball. I've got mayonnaise running down my arm, looking like a total lunatic. I'm in pain. And she didn't even laugh. She didn't even laugh? She didn't even mention it. I mean, the old Fiona would have talked about nothing else for years. Then when I died, right, she'd deliver a eulogy, entirely focusing on the time I suddenly screamed and squished up a sandwich. But she just tuts. And then finishes telling me that she's not going to be home for dinner that night. And then leaves. It's like... Honestly, it's like she's not there anymore. And I think... Right, listen, here she is. Not a word, okay? It's all fine, it's all fine. Hey, babe. How's it going? Hi. Good to see you. You okay? Yes, Simon, I'm fine. Thank you. Great. Great, great, great. Julie! How's it going? Bloody hell, what's the matter with you? Nothing, I've just been friendly. All oh, right. Never been friendly before. Kind of creepy, actually. Creepy? Unnatural. Like a ventriloquist dummy sort of come to life. Look, well, shall we all just take our seats? Yeah. So thank you for coming. I guess we'll just wait for Daniel to come and then... Uh... Can't he just join in when he gets here? I, I, no, no, not really. I'd like us all to be waiting for him when he comes in. Why? Because it's a special day. Special? Yeah, that's why I'm holding this kit. Sorry. 
There's nobody wondering why I'm holding a big cake. You know, I haven't even noticed. But it's massive. Yeah, but I mean, you've always got something in your hand. Or in your mouth. Or both at the same time. Hey, just because I always buy biscuits for everyone. Literally can't remember the last time anyone else had a biscuit. Yeah, but it's not like... Or the last time there were any biscuits left. Well, OK, but it's not like I've suddenly upgraded to big whole cakes. Oh, Andy. Maybe biscuits were just one of the gateway drugs. You'll be melting up cake mix on a spoon next. <laughs> Piping icing straight into your veins. You'll have to go on the game to pay for it. I'm not going on the game. That pretty woman. <laughs> Chubby man. <laughs> <laughs> Fat prick. For God's sake, Simon. Look, I'm sorry, I just... I mean, I just wanted to... Look, I'm, I'm, look, I'm not going on the game. And it's not for me. The cake is for Dan <sighs> Oh, Jesus Christ, Dano. <laughs> what the hell have you come as? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I've been running. Well, what from, Dano? What do you mean? He means, how far away are the police? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, no, you're way off me. I'm a new man, isn't it? I'm sorry I'm late, everyone. You carry on. Just gonna stretch out quickly. Whoa! Whoa, God almighty! Dano, those shorts! You count the hairs on your arse from here. You are right, son? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, fine. Well, it's just I've walked in head to toe in spandex and you've not taken a piss once. You had a stroke. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Uh, you look like a dildo. Yeah, that'll do, I guess. Right, we've done the introductions yet? Well, no, not... Yeah, obviously it's a big day, isn't it? So I'd... Is it? Oh, yeah, mammy. What do you think this cake's for? Is your eighth year sober today? Eight years? Yeah, eight years today. Well, I thought it was important. You always said that. You forget your own birthday, but but you always knew exactly how long it's been since you had a drink. Yeah, no, I, mean, I know, Andy, and yeah, of course it's important, and thank you. Thank you, mate, it's really sweet of you. OK, shall we make a start, then? Okay. Yeah. I'm Andy. I'm the group leader, and I am the group leader. Not an admiral. Not Chris Akabuse. What are you talking about? Well, I'm, not, I'm an alcoholic and it's been 18 years since my last drink. Julie. Yeah, all right, I'm Julie. It's been nine years since my last drink. I'm Simon. Not really an alcoholic. Caught drink driving. Work told me to come here and... You know what? It was the best thing that ever happened to me because... I may not be an alcoholic, but I wasn't happy. And then I came here and met Fiona, and, well, you know the story. Yeah, I'm I fell in love with her on the first day I saw her, and now here we are, and I just want to say it's getting better and I'm Fiona. Better. It's been three years since my last drink. Sorry, Simon, but we get it. Hi, right, I'm Dano. I'm an alcoholic, and it's been seven... Eight. Oh. Eight. Well, it's been eight years. Of course it has. Sorry, Andy, mate. Yeah, so mm. I'm Dano... And there's something I'd like to say, actually. I've been thinking, and I reckon I might knock it on the head. Huh? You want not done that. Uh, well, I just feel like I've moved forward enough, you know? And things are, honestly, things are great. New fella, and he's got me a job marketing at his firm. Not, not on my own yet, but learning. Hmm. No more scams and grifting and being a right mug, basically. You've never been a mug, Dano. Yeah, I have. <laughs> of course I have. But now he's got me into running and... Honestly, I've never felt... I feel like a different... Well, I, I run past pubs, like, every day. I tear past them. I, I catch the geezers inside huddled up over their pints in the darkness, looking out. And I, I know they clock me and I know what they think. Look at them shorts. <laughs> Yeah, they do. And, and I know they think that they've got it all worked out. That they've got it right. Because I used to be them, yeah? Looking at anyone doing anything outside of a pub, outside my little warm little world, and thinking they just don't get it. But now, I'm tearing past those geezers. Past me, the old me. Already done 5k, 10k, freezing and sweating and looking like a complete bell end. And you know what? I don't care. Because I'm free. For the first time in my whole life, I'm not running away from anything or to anything. I'm just running. And I feel strong. Strong enough, I think. So, I, I think this might be the last time for me, Andy. Oh. 
Oh, mate, that's good, isn't it? It's good that I feel ready, isn't it? Of course it is, love. Just... It's a bit of a shock, is all. But no. Good for you. We'll still be mates, though, won't we? I, I mean, I, I'll still see you, right? Of course we will, Julie. I mean, we're going out Wednesday, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Well, all right, then. Good. Here, maybe we should celebrate. Yeah? Maybe I will have a bit of that cake after all. Now, get off it. Hey, Andy. Andy? He's not... It's not for that. It's not a leaving cake, OK? It's, it's because today is an important day in here. Here. If you don't want it, then you know what? I think I'll just eat it myself. Oh, for <laughs> sake, Andy. What do you want him to do? What do you want any of us to do? Sit in this little room staring at each other till we all die? He's moving on. Daniel, good for you. I'm thrilled that everything's so... Sounds like everything's just wonderful. Thanks. Right. I'm sorry, everyone, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to make a move. I should have said there's something come up and... Uh... What? Where, where are you going? Out. Again? Yes, Simon, again. Is that OK? Uh, of, course, of course, it was just... Uh, I thought we were having dinner later. Well, I'll get something out. You don't have to worry about it, OK? Sorry, Andy. I'll see you next week. No, wait, wait. Um, I, I want to talk, OK? I mean, I know I don't ever usually, but I want to talk now, so so just don't go yet. There's something I, I, I need you to know. I get it, Fiona. What are you talking about? I get it, OK? I've been thinking about it non-stop. And I haven't slept, honestly. But I, I get it now, and I'm not, I'm not upset. But, I, I mean, I didn't think about how hard it was going to be for you. You, you, you know, you move in and it was, well, I, I think it was perfect. And then when Joe told me that he wanted to come and live at mine after uni and not with his mum, I, I just got excited, I, I guess, because I'd missed him. And I felt like I'd won a bit and I got carried away and I forgot that you know, it wasn't mine, not anymore. It was ours, our home. And suddenly, without even being asked, you're, you know, whether you like it or not, part of a family, in a family home, some other family's home. And I can't imagine how hard that must have been for you. And so, of course, you've been distant. Why would that be hard for me? Well, I, I was thinking about that and, and I thought that, you know, because of, well, you know what you told me, and then then my son turns up, my child, and then you're suddenly kind of his... You know, whether you like it or not, and... What are you talking about? What about... You remember? About what, Simon? About... In your 20s, you said you... Well... This is... I mean, this is the place we share, right? talk about anything, so, you know, I'm talking about the, your, the, uh, the abortion, the abortion, you know, and to go through that, and then everything that must have meant, and then, and then to not have, after that, any, and then to suddenly, you know, without wanting to be part of a family, to be, like, thrust into a family, oh, Jesus Christ. Christ, it's not that, is it? It's not that. Have I? I thought it was... I mean, I sat up all night, night after night, and I, I went through everything in my mind, and then when I, when I realised that it all, it all just made total sense, and... Did you feel like a big man when you worked it out? When you cracked the case? Did you feel good? And then when you decided that you were going to help me, do anything to help me work through it, did you get a warm little glow? No. I mean... Jesus, I can't breathe. It's like all the air's been sucked out. It's like I've fallen out of my spaceship. I just, I didn't... I just wanted to know why you... I, I just wanted to understand. Honestly. Fiona. Have you read much philosophy, Simon? Actually, I don't know why I'm asking. Of course you haven't. I know you, you see. 
Well, Wittgenstein once talked about how we could never understand a lion, even if that lion could speak our language. Now, I may be wrong, but I've always thought that that meant our experiences, our frames of reference, our understanding of the world, of everything, our very beings would be so different that while we might understand the words, the words would make no sense. Now, I'm not saying that men and women are all that different, but... There are some things. Right. Sorry. You never... A lion? So how dare you? How dare you twist my experience to fit your tidy little narrative? Because you know what? If there is an open, separating wound in my heart that will never close, or if I never gave it a moment's thought after I popped out of the clinic, if I went to a bar afterwards and, and if I met a friend and didn't even tell them where I'd been, it is none of your business! You're wondering which one I am now, aren't you? You still think it's that simple? Now I have to go. But why then? If it's not... Why have you switched off from me, Fiona? Please. It's because you spent months trying to work it out, Simon. And it's because you fell out of a spaceship when you realised you were wrong. It's because you buy me flowers on the way home from work and then throw them in the bin outside the house because you're worried I won't like them. It's because I love your son, I really do, and I love being part of your family. And I love you so much because as long as I've got you, I'm safe. Because what happens when you leave? What? Leave? Should I... I'd never, ever leave you. No, you will. You will, Simon. I know you will. You know how I know? Because I will make you. And it'll be easy. If you're not... You want to know where I've been? All those cancelled dinners. Nights with sad friends who need counselling. Simon. Drinking. Vodka. Anyway. Neat, strong, no frills or ceremony, ruthless. Fair enough, I'm, I'm so sorry. We can help you, okay? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think I want you to, Andy. I'm not sure I need you to, I'm not sure I should be here at all. Maybe this is my last time too. Well, what, not Fiona, I really don't think... I've been doing some thinking and um, I'm not sure I'm even an alcoholic to tell you the truth. I wish I was. Honestly, I think it would be easier if I was. I could say that when I hurt everyone, it wasn't my fault. Not me. Drink. I was out of control. Couldn't help it. And now I'm here. Now I've stopped. I'm better. Now I'm good. I wasn't out of control. Not out of control now. And I'm not good. There is something in me, I can feel it, something so ugly. And sometimes this thing, it feels cold and hard. And sometimes it feels boiling, boiling hot. And either way, methodically, bit by bit, or or all at once... (laughs) It wants to destroy everything. I I don't know what it is, and I don't know where it's come from or why it's there, but... It is there. It's not drink. It's... It's me. It's me. I'll wreck everything. Always. And if I can't use drink to do it, then... Simon, I'll find something. I will hurt you, Simon, drink or no drink, because that's what I do. Fiona. Do you know, when I was six, my mum gave me a first edition of Wind in the Willows from 1908. Her mother had given it to her when she was six, and her mother before that, and her mother... I remember it so clearly. It was beautiful, green, with the title in gold, and a picture of all the characters by a gypsy caravan. 
And she, uh, my mother, she made such a fuss of giving it to me. She said that uh, now I was growing up, she could trust me to look after it. I deserved it. I hated that book. A year or so later, I had an argument with her about something, something silly. And I took that book, that beautiful, rare book that meant so much to so many people, and I threw it on the fire. And I was so relieved. I hadn't done it because of the argument. I'd been waiting to do it, desperate to do it. Because it was a burden. This totem of love, of three generations of love. I knew I couldn't look after it. I didn't, I didn't deserve it. And I'd wreck it sooner or later, so... I thought I might as well do it now. I'm going to go. No, stop. There's something else I need to say. Will you marry me? Whoa. Simon. Oof, Simon, but I don't do that. No, no, I've got to. Stand up, Simon, for God's sake. Stand no. up. Fiona, will you marry me? Stand up. No. Oh, for God's sake. Will somebody please... Yeah, hold on. Come on, mate. Come on. It's not yeah. happening. No. Wait. Simon, this isn't right, mate. I don't make me pick you up. I am not getting up. Right. Simon, go. Ah. Straighten your legs. No. Straighten your legs. No. Well, I can't just hold you up. So put me down then. I'll take him outside. Well, do what? Just walk around with him? What's that going to look like? Like you've got all of them man bags. Simon. <laughs> Bollocks! Oh, oh, no. Simon, come on, mate. Come on. Get down that side. No. Oh. No. Put your bloody arms no. down. Well, I can't get through the door if his arms are out, can I? Uh, you can turn him sideways. Then he'll just... Do you know how arms work, Andy? Just put him down. No, oh. Come up there. Bring him back here. So, why don't you stand up? I'm not standing up. Oh, do me a... You know I've already done 10 cakes, uh, don't you? Oh, shut up about your money. Run or don't run, just for God's sake, leave the rest of us uh, me. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Oh. There you go. <sighs> This wasn't... Obviously, this wasn't how I planned it, OK? I bought this... this ring... months ago. I kept meaning to do it, but you kept pulling further and further away from me, and, and it felt more and more like it was going to be less, you know, like I was declaring my love, and, and more like I was begging you not to leave. But I don't care anymore, and I am begging you. I am begging you not to leave, to stay with me, and to let me keep you safe forever. And I mean forever, because there is nothing you could do, ever, ever do, to make me stop loving you. You can't say that. Sorry. I can. I can. You burnt that book, right? That beautiful book. Well, when I was a kid, I got Les McEwen's autograph. Who? Les McEwen, from the Bay City Rollers. Mm. I loved him. Made my dad take me to see them in Glasgow. Weren't they more for sort of, you know, girls? Yeah, they were. Yeah. They were. I had to go on my own. None of my mates would come with me. None of my mates were my mates after I asked them to come. Just me and my dad, and he hated them. So he was like miserable, just us two in the car, hundreds of miles to Glasgow, and me singing Shine a Line at full volume the whole way. And after the gig, I queued up and I met Les McEwen and got his autograph, and I took it home. And I put it in cling film and I pressed it into a Bay City Rollers album and then I put that in a suitcase and then I put the suitcase in a wardrobe. I was terrified, terrified of losing it. I hated the Bay City Rollers a month after that. Couldn't stand them. Heard Roxy music and changed my whole look, everything. My dad used to take the piss, saying, Shang a Lang at me when I walked in with my new Brian Ferry haircut. What's your point? I've still got that autograph in a record sleeve, in a suitcase, in my wardrobe at home because it meant something to me. So I kept it safe. And that's bloody, that's Les McEwen's autograph. You're even better than Les McEwen's autograph. You're the woman I love and I will always keep you safe and you can be as mad as you like because I am so sane. And you can be wild because I'm so boring and you can be destructive because I will rebuild everything, every time. And you can even push me away because I will pull you closer and I will never, ever 
leave you. And can someone please get me a cushion because my knees are bloody killing me. Stand up then. No, I'm not standing up until you say you'll marry me. Please. Please, Fiona. Are you sure? Are you sure? Of course I am. Okay. <laughs> Can I have a kiss now, please? Yes. Yes, of course. Simon. Uh, I literally can't get my knee off the floor. I think I, I think I've actually done something quite serious. <laughs> oh. Oh. I love you. I love you too. Mm. Oh, well, bloody hell. <laughs> I guess we should celebrate, shouldn't we? Celebrate? Yes, Stano, they're getting married, for well, God's sake. Well, hold on, have we forgotten something? What do you mean? Well, you've been drinking, Fiona. Oh, here we go. No, well, right, you know, OK, fine. It's not a big deal. Given that you're not even an alcoholic anyway. Here, Andy, thanks for the cake, mate. It does mean a lot. And I'm not going anywhere. Really? No. I'm sorry I got a bit carried away. I guess I forgot what a nightmare it all is. Start thinking I can outrun it. <laughs> that ugliness. It's in here. Forget that I could run past a million pubs before I end up in one, looking out, wondering what happened. And I've been sober for... Eight. Yeah. Eight years. I know. We've all got it, Fiona. That's something horrible, that's something we just want to drown. That thing that floats right back up to the top sooner or later, you know? Being an alcoholic ain't about drink. Drink ain't about drink. <laughs> God, I don't know, I don't understand it. None of us do. And I think you're... I think you're pretty bloody lucky. Because you found a geezer who's trying his hardest to understand too. Because he loves you. Bloody hell. Beautiful speech, Dana. It ended nice, didn't it? Mm. <laughs> now, how about we do celebrate? Andy, mate, let's have some of that cake. Come on, where's, where's the cake? Well, I've eaten it. The whole thing. It was massive. You were all talking and going on. It was delicious. I knew it. There's no going back to biscuits. Not now you've got a taste for the harder stuff. <laughs> and uh, if we look out the window in ten minutes, are we going to see you by that lamppost in a short skirt and boot? Two of asking guys if they want to party. <laughs> get the cake up front, Andy. <laughs> Always get the cake up front. What do you do for a vanilla slice, Andy? <laughs> How about a Victoria sponge? <laughs> ah, go all the way for a Victoria sponge. <laughs> and you, yeah, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Love in Recovery is written and created by Pete Jackson. It stars Rebecca Front, John Hanna, Sue Johnston, Paul Kay, and Johnny Vegas. The programme is produced and directed by Ben Warsfield and is a King Burt production for BBC Radio 4. Thanks for listening to the Comedy of the Week podcast from BBC Radio 4. If you enjoyed this episode of Love in Recovery, then you can find the Love in Recovery podcast in BBC Sounds. Before you go, let me just squeeze in here and tell you about the Flip podcast from BBC Radio 4. Each month, there's a new book set to listen to from people like Rhys James, Mae Martin and Joe Lysett. Subscribe to the Flip podcast on BBC Sounds.